Hi, Chris McClune here at FDIC International 2023. I'm at the Safeware booth where we're gonna be talking about some products that have been developed to assist response to electric vehicle fires. I'm with me today is Christine Lawrence. She's the government accounts manager for Safeware. She's gonna take us through some of those products. So, so Christine, with the advent yes. of electric vehicles being yes. pushed into the being pushed into the market, mm -hmm. they're becoming more and more pervasive. Yes. How have responses to incidents involving electric mm -hmm. vehicles changed? And also how has the equipment used to mitigate those incidents okay. changed? Okay, so the important thing is the risk and uh, that has caused first responders. So um, it, the most important thing is that they have to be able to respond to new um, hazards that they have not been trained in. So because of that risk, now there's all this new technology that has merged and come into the marketplace. So the EV plug is one of them. Most of them are very easy to use. So I'm gonna highlight this one really quickly. Um, so you take this plug, you put it into your carport, and when you press this button, uh, it will do a self-diagnostic. Once it does that self-diagnostic, once it turns blue, then it's safe for you to use. There are different colors, and those different colors will tell you um, the safety level in regards to the electric vehicle. Okay, so very easy to use. You plug it in, it's not locked in. You can take it out and remove it. You press this button, you turn it off, and there you have it. The reason why they need this, though, is um, because one of the things is they have to disable the vehicle. Um, electric vehicles, if they are not stabilized, they have the tendency to maybe um, just go off and then and they're not cons uh, go off and they're not stable. And that causes risk to the firefighters um, and responders. The next is the um, breach hill blanket. That blanket, you take it, you put it over a car. There's a lot of different applications. You can use it uh, as a firewall. Um, you can use it for lithium ion battery fires. And what it does is it stops the oxygen. So it keeps the fire from ex to continuing to grow and keeps the firefighters safe. Um, it's in an airtight bag and uh, it's very easy to deploy and simple to use. So Christine, beyond those two things, does Safeware offer any training for first responders uh, when, for when they are responding to incidents involving electric vehicles? Yes, so we have partnered with Hazard 3, who is a leading provider of electric vehicle training. Um, we've actually uh, sponsored some workshops and uh, even um, agencies like the likes of FBNY have relied on this training and, and that we've partnered with. Um, they actually have been doing this for a couple of years and they were very early into uh, training agencies and departments on this. It's, it's an eight hour course. Um, there is a workshop part and classroom and then hands on. And it really just teaches on the risk of the different battery um, fires. It could be lithium ion as well as several different batteries. So um, it's eight hours, it's a fantastic course um, because really the key to all of this is training, um, as I mentioned earlier. So this um, course has been very instrumental. Like I said, we have been doing this all across the country, training regions all across the country. Um, even in my region, um, almost all of these agencies have signed up and taken this class, and it teaches them risk-based training so that they understand how to respond to these emergencies. Now, how can fire departments get access to either the products or the sure. training that Safeware provides? Um, so that's a really great question. So um, one of the things that's really important is um, typically in public safety is they don't have money. So when they, they may want something, but they may not have the okay. funding or the money for that. So then there's an emergency um, that happens, right? There's a grant that comes up. There's some event in the news, there's fiscal year in. And so what do you do then if you have to go through a bidding process and use a contract and you don't have um, that these products? So we're already a part of these national cooperative contracts that have already been bidded um, competitively. So the procurement departments are aware of it. Um, and uh, we basically use these contracts to help our customers. Uh, one of the great things is we actually were just awarded a contract with SourceWell. SourceWell is very invested in the fire department um, space. They're here at FDIC. This contract was uh, competed and 24 companies um, responded to it. We were one of two, it was a catalog contract. And we basically put all of our products on that contract. So like I said, only two companies were awarded 
It was a catalog contract, Safeware, I mean, not Safeware, Sourcewell is here. They're at the trade shows. They're working with these agencies, trying to get them to understand how to use um, these contracts. And the great thing about us is we basically fill a lot of the gaps for fire departments. So that's hazmat, that's rescue, that's dive, it's water rescue, it's electric vehicle training. So, you know, there's a lot of interesting and sometimes weird things that they need in our contracts are there to facilitate it. You know, they've already been competed. Procurement departments know about them. We're part of all of these large, um, several large cooperative contracts that have already, um, you know, been facilitated there for the customers to go use them. I personally work in the National Capital Region. All of my teams have pretty much uh, been a part of this training. Our contract covers the training. It covers the services. Um, we just, I work with one of the largest USAR teams that was deployed and when they come back, they have to be able to replace all of that equipment. So they were just in Turkey. So how do you replace all of that equipment? You have to have products that are already part of a competitively vetted project, I mean, uh, contract. And so that's what we come, where we come into play. We, um, these are our expertise. We are passionate about it. We're really good at it. Um, and we do very well in this space. Well, thank you, Christine, for taking some sure. time out to explain all that to us. If anyone wants to get in touch with Safeware, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, so um, we cover, we are a national provider. The best way would be to go to Safeware, which is S-A-F-E-W-A-R-E-I-N-C.com. And from there, depending on where you are in the region, there are account managers that cover the entire country. And then from there, we will get you in touch with the right uh, person. But we have customer service reps. We have a tech services team. We have um, account managers in the field. We have contract support. So whatever you need, our company is there to support you. All right, great, 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 Christine. Thank you again. Again, this has been Chris McLoon at FDIC International 2023. Have a good one and stay safe.